Yo, what is up folks, TrevCG here, and Wazel Drain provided some nice additions for a couple of different creature archetypes. We will get to fairies, but the one I want to look at first, maybe a bit of an underdog here, is Rat. The deck I've looked at in the past in Explorer and Pioneer, um, but a few new cards here that maybe push the deck over the top. So let's start with the King, Lord Skitter. Two and a black for a 3-3. Three, three. Legendary creature, Rat Noble. Whenever another rat enters the battlefield under your control, exit up to one time card from opponent's graveyard. It's a pretty nice graveyard, hate. A hey, not super battle. However, at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token with this creature can't block. A uh, rattle master, if you will. That's that's not very funny. And hey, this is a pretty cool effect, but not like super, super powerful. If you're not really familiar, the deck that it's trying to do, what I was trying to do before, is you're using Elvish Mystic and Lanor Elves to like, let you power out some, some pretty powerful three drop rats alongside supporting Collective Company and really allowing you to go wide with Rat Colony, making them super, super powerful. Alongside, hey, you've got some pack rats, some classics, and the big real engine that kind of carried the deck was Caramonix. Uh, awesome card from Phyrexia. One black back for a 3-3. Three, three. has Toxic 1 and other rats you control getting Toxic, which occasionally does come up. But hey, they're still beating down for normal damage. Obviously, Rat Colonies getting a huge power buff anyway. But when Karamunix enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library, reveal any number of rat cards from among them, and put the reveal cards into your hand. Now this is like huge, um, considering here we're playing 24, 28, 29 rats in total. This is gonna be drawing you a lot of cards, providing you a ton of card advantage. So the real version of the deck you're using, okay, cool, we're going wide with Rat Colony. We're like using Elvish, Lows, Elvish Mystic, Lanor Elf, letting us do like, Turn three, you can play two rats, powers or, or play cast collector company, and that way, like, kind of powering out is really kind of potent aggro draw. Um, but one of the things is that the deck didn't have any way for like to get evasion. If your opponent just managed to make a bunch of blockers, you get throw, and you're a little vulnerable to combo. And so, hey, Lost Skitter gives you some nice um, utility versus graveyard deck, so like you're not losing to Grease Fangers often because you've got some ways to exile cards from opponent's graveyard. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But the other, and I think the biggest addition to the deck, is actually Lord Skitter's Butcher. Two and a black for a 2-3, when it enters the battlefield, choose one. First mode, create, create a 1-1 one, one black rat token, creature can't block. Okay, fine. Again, go wide, like, having powerful three drops and a number of different powerful three drops to bring to play off collective company is really, really nice. Unless you go wide and then, you know, obviously you're powering up your rat colonies, etc. But, second mode, you may sacrifice another creature if you do, you scry two, then draw a card. Okay, maybe you want to dig for a card in particular. Maybe you want to dig towards your next collector company or Karamonix so that you're going to reset card advantage. Or later in the game, you also have these Agadim's Awakenings, which you can cast for one, two, three, which is pretty handy. But the huge ability is creatures you control gain menace on a turn. Me saying, hey, I'm going to play this and I'm going to kill you with all my rat colonies getting menace. Uh, and these get pretty big, pretty scary, pretty quickly. So. Let's run down the list. We have our six one-drop elves. We don't want to draw too many of them, but they're really, really nice to be able to accelerate out both Collector Company and also our pretty powerful three-drop rat cards. Caramonix is the main one you want to cast as soon as possible. Just start accumulating card advantage. Sweet. Also being able to just dump out two rat colonies on turn three is really handy. You're going to go like elf, colony, 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 and all of a sudden you're like attacking for like a ton of damage. Then we have four copies of pack rat. So it lets you turn extra lands that you draw, any cards that kind of like, hey, le extra legendary copies into more rats, and obviously do scale again, similar to Rat Company, but also scale in toughness, which is pretty, pretty nice. So 20, <laughs> with 16 rat colonies, uh, two drop rats. Awesome, awesome. You can feel free to tweak the numbers. I was thinking about trying a mono black version where you play like Thoughtseize, Fate or Push, have a little bit more interaction and cut the mana elves, but being able to play mana elves in Collector Company, I think is just such a huge advantage. So I ended up adding them back. Then at three, just one copy of Lord Skitter. You can place some more on the sideboard, but I've actually opted for some more traditional kind of like graveyard hate to be a little bit more certain of our safety versus like Grease Fang, Dredge, and that kind of thing. Four copies of Lord Skitter's Butcher, huge engine card for the deck, being able to be the card that says, all right, this is my like, effectively like, overrun style effect on a creature that you can also find off Collector Company. Super, super powerful. But hey, early on in the game, you can play this on turn three, go wide, get two rats out of it if you don't have the rat colonies to build it up with. Um, very, very solid. Four copies of Caramonix, amazing card advantage engine, often drawing like three cards um, and also being able to like give all your other rats toxic. Again, occasionally does come up. Um, and then lastly, kind of contributing to our lands, three copies of Agadim's Awakening. Um, bringing back the land world isn't like, that important, but like being able to bring back a two drop and a three drop, really, really good. The other thing I was going to say is I was thinking a little bit about mono black like rats with uh, Nykthos. Again, you'd be cutting like the Elvish Mystic or Lanor Elves, and maybe you could play like Typhoid Rats 
but they're a little underwhelming. You've got like Typhoid Rats, and there's a couple of other one mana rats that are just not very good. One of the things with that is that you don't want to like give your opponent random discards because obviously you're playing Grease Fang, you're just enabling that stuff. It would be okay, but because of Grease Fang in particular, are a little weaker than they would be at one. And so I thought that sticking to the kind of like company idea where we're trying to accelerate with Elvish Mystic Land or else is better. But it is something worth trying if you're committed on the rat plan. Then, of course, you have full collector companies, kind of holds everything together. Be able to company for like even just like two, two drop rats is really really good but obviously hitting camera for extra card advantage or occasionally your cast is trying to fight hit a lord's good butcher to kind of win the game effectively on the spot uh, with that menace ability really really good mana base okay so we do have these three aliens awakenings we've got four copies of meter vault four overgrown tombs four animal race four blooming marshal and two dark ball pathways we want to be able to cast our elves on turn one but other than that we largely just want black mana we only really need one green source um but we do want to be able to cast like triple black for this double black here reliably Number of duels. Mute Vault, obviously also a rat. Great benefits off this ability, benefits off Caramonix, buffs all the other guys. Awesome. Let's take a look at the sideboard and then I'll hop into some ranked games. So, we have two copies of Fatal Push for early aggro. We have two copies of Icon of Ancestry. This is a nice way to commit power to the board versus control decks without actually committing creature resources from your hand. And then later on, you can then use the ability to then go find more rats, which is awesome. Versus other creature decks, you've got three copies of Crippling Fear. One of the nice things about playing almost entirely rats, you have the elves lying around, is that you can play this. Creatures that aren't of the chosen type get minus three, minus three standard turns. Obviously we're gonna pick rats and then kill the other creatures. Love that. Two copies of Thought Seas, so this is more like combo stuff or control. Two copies of Damping Sphere, kind of a hedge towards uh, Lotus Field, particularly like the blue-white field decks. And then four copies of Leyline of the Void, just don't lose the graveyard decks. Nice, in it? And there we go. Let's hop into some best of three ranked games. And if you're not already, please do subscribe to the channel. All right, first match here with the rats. Uh, on the draw, four lands, but hey, we've got like two, three, four. What companion is this? It's a Ganther. It'd be like, if it's like Transmogrifies, it's maybe a little slow, but I think I'm willing to keep it on the draw. Obviously, we don't want to draw any more lands. You see a mountain. Could be like Blue Red Wizard, something like that as well. Blue with the Blooming Marsh. Is that the sound is a little mundane. Alright. Well, our class, we're not under early pressure, and our opponent's not going to, like, combo off. They're going to put a bunch of power into play soon, but uh, we have a little bit of time to work with. So go ahead and... I think I play power at first. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily signify that we are all in. We can threaten to make Skitter's Butcher, and then attack with the 3-3 next turn, and then lead that into Lighter Company. Yeah, I'll just level this up. Okay. Bombs, Mox Amber. Oh, jeez. That is mana. This deck looks sick. Alright. Oh, they're just gonna fight it? Ew. That's not very cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. Another Blooming Wash. We think we do still want to do this. We're going to be uh, in some trouble pretty soon. So, to be fair, with company, we have a good chance to make creatures that are big enough to block this and not be in too horrendous position. We'll see, though. We at least another turn before Dominic can fight again, which is a little bit of time. Okay, Clothfist is active. Yeah, 8 or 7. Oof. Could be tough. And no box here going to 14, but then, hey, we're going to be... We've got a creature. At least it's not non-creature stuff for Clothis to exile them. Though. We are going to be... This company needs to be really good. Yeah. No box. Um, maybe consider main phasing, but I think, like, hey, making them have to actually think about what we could company into. Oh yeah, it's a land otherwise, yeah. Alright, they've plussed here rather than uh, fighting, which makes me feel a little better, but also, hey, they've got Bard Classic, which again, to play out. Alright, they have some big creatures. Our saving grace here is that we can have some big rats at the moment. The one kind of problem, maybe, 
is that, uh, well, we need to hit really well off company. Um, Caramarnix is good to great. Baccarat, that makes it 4-4. Four, four. The Caramarnix is one thing. If we go Baccarat Lord's get his butcher, we get a five blade which trades the Megalos, which I think is the way to do this. Uh, and we've got a Rattacami to play at the minute, so I think we do this. Butcher will have make a, another rat, and then we can go ahead and block this. Uh, this is unfortunately indestructible, but we'll... currently 11, it's not getting turned off yet. <laughs> it's gonna be a little while. We go to 7 here, let's put creatures in the graveyard, Clothis is something we don't have right answers for. Um, and so we want to see some blocking, but I think our plan here is to go... We go Rat Colony, Rat Colony, these will be 6 6s. Or we can go Rat Colony, Skitter's Butcher. We have one of them as like a as like a huge blocker. The one, th the only other thing is that the um, butch provides us with a win condition if they don't make any good attacks. We're at twenty two. Turns out these be six. Don't know if you think about it, seven, eight. We just like chump block these on the. Uh, it's be interesting. We're definitely gonna play one of these. Okay, so what do we do with the other one? We give the scry draw here, but I don't think we're gonna get too much time. Currently there's one creature, two two cards for them to, there's a few cards for them to with Clothis. Um, yeah, I think the highest equity thing we can do is play, I think I have a removal spell. Oh, they can fight, can't they? Yeah, which means we need two rat colonies anyway. All right, we'll do this. Attacks. So they get to eat something again, we get a five. Unfortunately, that the pack rat there was the only thing that would have been able to block Clothis now. It was like it would be like a six six, which would be all right. We have to fight one of these down. This is a six now. Mm, I'm not sure. Oh, what does the third level do? Whenever you cast a legendary spell, exile top two cards. Is that with just Clothis? We have to block one of these in the way. We're like two more turns before we're dead to just cloth this. Alright. Overgrown team not really doing us a ton. They at least can't fight again this turn. They could pop off with some bar class draw stuff, but I think. Our best line is to start getting aggressive now, maybe. Not chopping them down, they are gaining life over this. Uh, this is not like a way they can like dig for a bone for giant. I don't really want to sacrifice anything. You know yeah, sure. Menace actually, so this actually enables us to do some stuff. Um, we can go because obviously these can't block. Then one of these at Domri, got Menace. Let me make the attack here as well. And we've got three blockers on the way back. Um, because they did your removal spell. Okay, smart. But now they're like a lower life total. And if they don't make like good attacks, I'm just gonna play this just in case. You just where we need the mana. Let's see, they can drain us if they. Yeah, we have one more turn of draining effectively to survive. Alright, what do they got? Sage you. Level up again here, so not anything really. Um, nice to them on the back foot. Yeah, I'm just going to maintain this company. If we hit another butcher, that's game. Uh, we don't. Wait, no, we do. So we want. To show the butcher, then probably a pack rat. Is there any advantage here to getting camera? It's camera because we will have an SMO, which going to be dead if we don't kill them. Following turn. So, seven. Oh, wait, these will be nines, so these two will both need to be blocked.
Uh, I think this is a good enough reason not to get carry my next. Just get the extra cards. Features of Jogger Menace. And just one. There. Cast this. It does make a lot of damage, so they have to put these two on one of these. So we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Not quite enough, but it's not really a good reason. Uh, we have three blockers. Is there any world where three blockers are enough? We have to lose eight. They need to make two attackers. Let's leave one more blocker back. This is kind of pedantic. We will kill them next time, kind of no matter what. It's one of these things where, like, if they top deck, like, if they're playing Bunkshire Giant and top deck it, then uh, we definitely want to make sure we kill Gigant first. Not that it matters. All right, they do gain some poison, which is like, the poison is relevant in like versus like angels or something where your opponent's gaining a bunch of life. Whereas a way to do that, then hey, right. So they get to exile the top four cards. They have a way to deal damage. That makes dragon. At least dragon gives creatures haste. I'm really enjoying that we kept blockers back. Oh, they can go off, can't they, with a the mana? Oh, maybe we are just dead. No way. Oh dear. That fights as well. We're actually dead to this thing. Wherever it is. Gory gory. I was not ready for this. We could have let this back, but honestly, we would have died anyway. Well, these can't block. These had to attack to force the blocks. You have one extra blocker. We are at one. I mean, not everything is haste right this second, but it should be. Very soon. That's gonna find something. Yeah, we're already dead on board. Let them do their thing. All right. Okay. We had a bit of a slow start there, um, but yeah, got kind of wombo combat out at the end. That is pretty cool. Um, right. So creature matchup. We want the crippling fears. I don't think the fatal push is a good hit because a lot of the creatures just start at three mana. Um, there are a couple of two mana things actually. Maybe these are worth bringing in. Uh, let's see what we actually think we want to cut. Because that's the other thing. It's like, hey, if there's nothing we want to cut, then. And we leave them. That's how it goes. We do want the elves. We just need to be like as fast as possible here. Really, it's just like a brace onto the board. Um, unfortunately, I think that our lord they just get a king. Uh, like the rats that you're making with both the butcher and skitter are populating. Maybe actually, like we cut one of them. No, I think the butcher's pretty. I think I butchers that maybe like. Other than like camera, it's maybe the best card in the deck. I guess I can't any, but uh... yeah, I think what we do actually, actually, just like trim a couple of these for crippling fears. They're not like going super fast to the board, but they also do make quite big creatures, so it's not actually killing everything. I am pretty torn here. Maybe the fatal pushes are better. Uh, we want to uh, four, eight, twelve, fourteen. Oh, and the agonemes because they're actually gonna be a little angel. Yeah, we can't even want to. Grab my colony. We'll, we'll leave this just so it does populate. This. Um, also, as we actually noticed, having been able to exile cards from graveyards is actually relevant. Uh, so here. I won down. Let's see if we can bring this back. Oh dear. No printing hand there. Nothing really going for us. 
Uh, our second enemy here doesn't have a green source or a black source. We're getting a bit swept by the mutant vault. So we're going down to five. Uh, this has black mana, but does not. Oh dear. We need to draw pretty well. Let's do something like this. Try and hit a green source. Or we try and lean into the fear and just put the collector company on the bottom. Mm. We win the game if we do that, though. I think this is a better gamble. We're down to five anyway. It's going to be rough, rough cooking. Another twenty lands. Didn't do anything crazy. Okay, that's really not the greatest draw. A green source here would let us company the following turn. Good. Thing is that, like, if we do have a super fast draw, we can get out ahead of all the stuff they're doing. Go ahead and make a rat. We just didn't push pressure them early last game with damage wise. Alright, so they get to level up and we'll see what they actually play here. Some options. If the class itself, you're not familiar, the, the, once you blow it up, legendary spells, red green, that's the cast. So anything that costs red green is legendary, like these. No. Yeah, I guess there's a nice addition to stuck actually. That is not what we want to see. Uh, do I think they just double block the pack, right? I don't think that they can. The down cards? Oh, Cinderclasm. Alright, I think we just go next game. We have no cards on our hand we can cast. Alright, next match, next match. That was rough. We nearly we nearly got game one. Uh, game two, Morgan to five into just getting swept up by the Cinderclasm. Um, Alright, see you in the next one. Alright, down but not out. Rats back with a second match. Yeah, a rough, rough loss there. Some mulligan trouble at the end, and then obviously got Cinderclasm to finish off. And then, yeah, the first game versus Red Green, we were, uh, uh, the first, yeah, the first game of the match versus Red Green, we, uh, just got one brick combo that one turn, which is kind of crazy. Uh, no lands here, I'm gonna put that one back. We are on the play. We could risk this. We are on six already. I don't really love going to five. Put a rat colony back. We're just gonna draw lands. And with pack rat, we could actually draw lands the rest of the game and be pretty happy. Um, heck. Again, the other side. Is this heroic? Oh no. Oh no. Not like this. Okay. Let's make the colony. The colony represents the most damage. It is the one that gets jump blocks the easiest, but we're only going into like two power this coming turn. Ooh, synthesizer. Do they hit a land? They do hit a land. So lucky, so lucky. Sorry. Uh, and commandos. Okay, sure. This looks like it is going to be a bit of a race. Um, to that end, I'm going to go Colony over Pack Rack, so it presents more damage next turn. In across for three. I wonder if there's a Bonicorn deck or if they're on some just like prowessy stuff. They have a land, they do not have an untapped land for this. Okay, we will make another Rat Colony. Come in for eight. I do like maths. Alright, so the commander's are going to flip here, that provides one blocker. They have Play With Fire to interact with us, that'll shoot something down. They also have like other cards they can play, obviously. Here comes the Soul Scar Mage, they have another one drop. Uh, there's a land. Okay, Blooming Wash is neat, but it doesn't actually, like, doesn't actually give us tons. Uh, we're now forcing some blockers, or interaction at least. We'll see if they just trade off. They do. We have company to catch back up, and of course, we can do pack rat things. Uh, showdown. Alright, do they hit a land here? They do not. They can play this tapped, I think. Yeah, they do so. I'm going to pass. They're at seven. Alright, rat colony is slightly better. I think they're pack crack it here just because of the amount of damage. Pretty close though. But it's also only two mana, but hey. They, they should know at this point. We don't, we're not actually representing anything. Okay, P is going to make a bunch of blockers. I combo that with Reckless Impulse. Stop putting counters on things. We're going to need a Butcher to give us Menace pretty soon. Yeah, we're getting overran by the uh, Lots of Herd. Oh, so many blockers. 
And attackers. Um, okay. Let's pass. As previously discussed, we don't have as many. Oh, geez, we might be dead. What is? New showdown does have more cards in exile than to make doctors, but I think we might just be. Now they are putting hands on the source card major instead of flyers though, which is fine by me. Land. Okay. Um. Really need to hit for company. I think we just do this. I don't think we can afford to take the damage. So they can well make loads of flying. Yeah, that's the worst land to draw. Uh, I'll pass, but I think we're dead. Got another set of counters coming down onto the ornithopters. Uh, onto the thopters. All right. Unfortunately, we do have some good cards for this matchup. We take some solace in that. Yeah, they cast enough in not non creature calling. We're good to we're good to skip this. All right. Okay. Different strategy. Crippling fears absolutely in. Fatal pushes. I think we want to bring in as well. Kill peer. Uh, important cards there. Things you want to cut on our side. The Seer King is doing nothing here. Caramonix is an interesting one. We want the card advantage, but um, I am going to basically trim one alongside an Agony's Awakening because um, we're just not going to have time to be doing these kind of things. Uh, one, two, three. I think we just trim a couple of rat colonies to make the rest of the space. Uh, let's run this. Yeah, and even without the third copy of Agony, we just got 20 lands, which is a good number. I do feel like we've been a little unfortunate as gone, but hey. Uh no more. Two lands, do the crippling fear for later. Alright, no problem. We'll lead off with the overgrown team taps. Humanos. Yep, yep, yep. So far everything's fine. We'll again rat colonize. Which will be shot down. Okay. Um, that does give us the fourth mana. Um, given that, I think I'll play Pack Rat and pray they don't have another removal spell. But if they do, they want to kill Pack Rat over the other stuff, so I think that's kind of okay. Alright, Impulse. Is it here to play with fire? Assumably they had a land. Which one are they firing at? They're going to fire down the Pack Rat. Alright, we want to hold this Crippling Fear for a bit. Um, See if they're gonna attack or not. I don't think there's a good enough reason for them not to attack here. So we have the option to either come here or just make two rat colonies. Uh two rat colonies is the most damage this deck can put out for out put out, like card for card. I think I'm actually gonna do that. Uh, and that way, like okay. We're leading into like either we can go like Crippling Fear. Crippling Fear unfortunately does take us off the Elvish Mystic, which means you want to cast a company first. Um, but be happy for them to kind of go off doing the peer things. Back in stone, get me out of there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a beating. That is a beating. Uh, Mutable. I'm coming in for one. All right. Yeah, this may, maybe they. Uh, I don't think they decide wanted to be like more of like a mid range deck. That's just how the draws played out. Um, deck is declaration stone is very very good against us. That is for sure true. 
just exile all of our rat colonies. Uh, I'm gonna cast it. Could have been bait, but hey, Karamunix plus rat colony. See if this trigger's gonna get to resolve or not. We do the fiery impulse. Uh, we will draw these. No blocks. That is their mana. Alright, Agadeems is going to be a nice one to keep hold of as well. Um, do you want to play the Butcher? Oh, we do want to play the Butcher out because we actually don't have, um, like, great. Uh, yeah, so what I want to do is go Rat Colony into Butcher. I'm a little worried they have some way to deal, like, uh, like some, some something else that's a little like Cynoclasm. Not Cynoclasm, Clasm, but like something that's like the one mana, that one damage to each creature. Uh, you're wide here for damage. The rat colony. Unfortunately, because Caramonix died with the etching in play, it does get exiled. Alright, so we basically are like, hey, you can have your showdown turn, but. We would like to be able to cripple and kill you at the end of that. We need to basically get the timing right for it. We didn't hit a removal spell here? No. Uh, what was the damage like on board? Oh, I think we get them with this. Animate. As a nice. That's kind of how we drew it up. I don't think I want to change anything on the draw. I definitely want the animation. Um, but hey, anything we're forgetting? Maybe cutting Caramonix is 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 is, is heresy. That might be true. The answer might actually be like cut a company just not casting as much. I only have six. I think actually only having the six ball drops is probably better. <laughs> also feels like heresy though. But yeah, getting to four has been problematic. We've been killing our mana creatures. Oh, we can't just draw lands. Spells. Alright. Keep this, put the planner away spec. Uh, you know, I should just... that. Okay. That at least is going to force them to play some spells early. They've also... They've gone to five. Maybe we... Maybe we're in with a shot. So, here's our elf. I think they have a play with five, but maybe didn't cast it. They randomly hold priority a little bit. Um... Okay. Let's rat colony. I wonder if they have a good way to trigger this early. If they have like a reckless impulse now, then like yeah. Okay, red resolve, same thing. No land. Do they have a land in hand? They do have a land in hand. They can play the commandos, make a thought to now. Oh no, they're gonna play the fire instead. Okay. It's not the end of the world. We actually have all the land we want. Uh no blocks. Sure. They have commando from and All right, maybe we get them with a little pack rat ambush. Does this pack rat can block the NLR right now with the buff? Or potentially maybe like to try and play with fire it. Been an interesting take on the deck as well, actually. Like slightly different to what I'm used to seeing. We saw a synthesizer game one, and then also playing. Um... We might be getting falling for the trap here. Do they have another copy of that effect? No! No! Ugh. Okay, well. There's that. We're at 14, though. I think we are fine to play this game. We don't want to block here, I don't think. 
And we can't really rely on being able to block here either, because they have a bunch of removal, as we've seen. That is the danger. We like, we're like, hey, we get to be clever and do our meter vault thing, but then yeah, I got punished. Life of Hazard being able to take down Colony is also miserable. Um, but allow it, allow it. Come on, company. No company. Okay. Um, they don't have mana to cast this right now. I don't have any other good targets for it. I am, who am I kidding? We're just going to play these out. But, uh... We attack with Packrat, but not with the Rat Colony, and they can kill one of these with the Spike of Acid, but it means the other one will be free to be able to three, at least threaten to block either Peer or the Steamkin. But, if they have any kind of Reckless Impulse or Ren's um, Resolve Effect left, and they can just like kind of go off with Steamkins, then we are in some trouble. Alright. They have made mana. The last card of the Spike of Acid? Okay. Not the end of the world, but the Thopters are going to kill us in a turn. Or are they? Or are they? Put your hands up! Let's go! Leave your hands in the air. They just don't care. The rats are here. Alright. The rats will take one. And we will go to game three. Alright. Match number three with the rats. Yeah, those cyber cards are pretty nice. Gotta say, Kaplan Fear. Uh, uh, opponent on the play again? Uh, do you have lands and spells though? We'll keep this. Yeah. Let me know in the comments below. If you want to see a mono black version of this, kind of playing into Nick Voss Devotion with the Rats, then uh, yeah. Yeah, in the comments, I will try and get some of that stuff out. I think there's a lot of potential there. Actually, see, seeing all the Kamal, I might be biased seeing the Kamal Stronghold stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, seeing a lot of. Uh, ooh, no second black sources. Okay, this is John Sacrifice. We gotta pray that they do not have a Mayhem Devil at the ready. They did use mana to make the Fable. We'll see, we'll see. I maybe just block Token. But we maybe just get shredded. All right, Horner Bridge into. Wait for it. Uh, they're gonna attack, so I don't want to block. But uh, boom! There it is. Okay. How many ways do they have? That is a second black source. That's great. How many ways do they have to? Sacrifice at the moment. At the minute, the answer is none, actually. Uh, literally just the goblin. Um, which can definitely do a lot. Uh, can you just pass with company here? You only do. If, if they get to activate the fable, like, the game is done. But, hey. Yeah, John's Sacrifice, interesting one. Yeah, Mayhem Devil! Um, a problem here, like it is for so many decks. I feel like this is just enabling stuff. Yeah, they've got the Gilded Goose. Hmm, how many turns are we going to have? We don't really have answers for the Reflection main deck. They can copy, you know what, actually, I think this is correct. Just denies them a way to generate things to sacrifice, but do you have the food token they can get? Ah, I dislike it. Wish they set up the Mayhem Devil. 
Nice company. Let's see what's up. They might kill the Elvish Risk in response, actually, but no. Not yet. Pack Rat does survive some of this stuff. Which is nice. Paramonix gonna get us some cards. It's important. We're gonna need to play through this. Ah, if they have a removal spell in hand they can use on the Pack Rat, that is also problematic. They could actually go make make foods, sack food, sack treasure to kill it. That's a lot of resources. On the path route. Yeah, they're gonna set the treasure. Oh, they're gonna the Elvish there. And then Fatal push the Caramon next. Oh, pay four to tear asunder. Okay, so that stops them making food. And um, we do get to add all the cards still. That is fine. Alright, let's get is actually kind of nice one. Oh, we do want mana now, though. Do you want mana now? Um. Then being able to. Now they just have the Golden Goose as a. Uh, like. Sacrifice fodder. Uh, the most magnificent thing to do is to. Most managers do a three mana thing. The butcher makes most power onto the board. It's not like they actually want to ping off a one one. It also eats some of the two twos in combat. So let's try. All right, I'm gonna try and play through the mayhem double. It's gonna be tricky. Oh, what five mana? If they have uh, the dragon guy as the last card in hand, that's rough. All right. Here we are, making Mayhem Devils. They can just do this. This actually not the most powerful, but uh, pretty good. So they ping the token, and then they can also ping us. Or are they gonna ping the the rat? Oh, because the other devil's gonna get sacrificed. Oh man, miserable. Uh, do I think that order blocks correctly? The problem is that this is going to get sacrificed and ping for two damage anyway, which is going to kill at least the pack rat. If I do this the right way, if they order correctly, they can kill it. But um, yeah. Now they at least get to keep something. Is the is the trick there? Uh. What do we got? We're getting Reflection Kiki Jiki like every time. Not Reflection Kiki Jiki, just Reflectioned. Um, which is like four sacrifices with the Gilded Geese. I think it's the best way to dig out of it, but also like, not great. Yeah, we just effectively drew got two cards. Alright, we'll see. Let's try and play through it. Gotta try. Here's another matchup though that gets a lot better after sideboarding. Let me play some heaters. Um, so currently... Oh, they've already made the food. Right. Uh... Let's say no blocks. See what they decide to do with that damage. Uh, they do just have... No, no, they have four points of damage to point around, not six. Alright. Because, for whatever reason, the sacrifice is not exiled. It's supposed to be a token, because it's supposed to be like, oh, he Uh... I guess I'm good. 
again, puts the most power in play into play. This is like a problem though. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think what we can hit to get out of the of the lot. We're just like dead on board. We're not dead on board, but we're dead uh, momentarily. Now we're dead on board. Alright. Game two, game two. Uh, yeah. Yeah, playing against Declaration Stone into Bayhub Double is rude. We will crippling fear, and I think we also bring these fatal push things. So you just need as many answers to damping. To that thing, so to get mayhem devil as possible. The icon of Andrasy actually also kind of low key sleeper here, I think. Um, just because they can stop our stuff dying um, as easily, like getting pinged. Or maybe, maybe, uh, well, if you have, yeah, okay, that seems reasonable. Let them play. What do we want to cut? In spite of seeing, like, cat oven things. Lord Scare doesn't actually interact with that well, it just kind of looks like it does. I think we also maybe take off one of these. Um, we still need to work out exactly what else we're trimming. So we're bringing in all the removal. Maybe we keep out the Fatal Pushes and just bring the Crippling Fears and Icons. And then we're boarding in a lot of expensive cards. That's going to kind of do that. Alright. On the play now, again. See what we got. Small again. Keep. Um. Yeah. The way this curve looks, it's turn one elf into turn two butcher into turn three two rat colonies. Um. Assume we draw land. Assuming fatal push sale. That is, you know, not the best. All right. Different way. Do you have a turn two play, sir? Ah. This is a reminder that Rat Colony, unfortunately, is a 1 1. We have the Butcher, though, and so I'm going to no attacks here. I'm going to try and assemble a board and then give them Menace to kind of run over our opponent. Trail of Crumbs. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, this is interesting until like, at this point we're like, okay, we can start taking a swing. Depends what uh, what this stuff looks like. So now, like, if they play a creature, we can play this and all of a sudden we're doing 15. Yeah, the oven is annoying, for sure. Now we have 20 damage that in play. I'm gonna still say no attacks. I don't want to let them kind of just like go off with trailer crumbs. And this is the one turn that we just pray they don't have a mayhem devil again. Seems to be doing this a little too often, I'll be honest. I mean, that's what the matchup's about, I guess, here. In this specific case. Excuse me. Yeah, like this time we didn't quite have lethal, but it was close. Now, like we like would have done, sure. I don't do the math. So we'd have had three attackers. We'd have had one, two more rats. Uh, so three. Yeah, so one more rat in play effectively than now. So six. And we've done 18 damage. Which, like, their life total is 18 now, but they've also, like, paid some life, right? Ugh, oh, I'm so mad. 
I'm not mad, but I'm just upset and disappointed. That being said, we have Caramona, XP Plus Company, we have good draws here. Gleaming Marsh is not one of them. Um, I do think that the Butcher is like our one of our ways out of this. Uh, this feels pretty bad. We're gonna do it though, I think. We basically need to find one of those two cards to dig us back out of the hole. Uh, yeah. Um, neither of these really get us there. The pack rat's almost helpful, but we have to uh, try. Crippling fear is an insurance policy. For sure. Devil. Like they can kill, like they can kill the, the butcher. Does mean that none of the other things we think are important right now. Uh, I'm thinking. We're at 16. Uh, Fox turns around fairly quickly, especially when they can make sure the key. We want to clear this up. Like our next turn, we want to be drawing into collector companies. Let's try and do that when we don't have a mayhem double in play. That's our way out of this, I think. Yeah, sure, you get some free triggers here. Oh, you sucks, they have not used the trail of crimson ability at all. Volunteering to not have food in play. Uh, they got to go and try and find the cards. So, hey, we're also on nine. Right, Caramonic's off the top. Alright, Fable into. Yeah, they have Gilded Goose, plus a new Witch's Ovens, like two Witch's Ovens. Some might be lights out. Uh. Alright, one the shot. Do not loot into Mayhem Devil, please. I always forget it's one to activate this and not two. Um, yeah, actually, with the Miho Massacre, we are basically just. What's the draw step? What's the draw step? I'm ready. Yeah, I'm just gonna escape. Alright. Well, that was tough, but I'll see you in the wrap up. Alright, here we are with the wrap up. Went two, well, sorry, no, one and two overall, uh, losing to red, green, and then Jund Sacrifice at the end there. Jund Sacrifice, hey, we've got infinite one toughest creatures. The It is pretty rough. Having a way to buff them out of the border there kind of Ancestry Street is nice, but we unfortunately did not find one. A bit of a weakness there. Uh, the red green match did just kind of get comboed out. But, how is the deck overall? One, we found out the Crippling Fear is an amazing cyber card, so that's really cool. But, like, the actual structure of the deck, Caramonix, great. The Rat King, it remains the Rat King. Lord Skitter, we didn't really find any of the matches where it's, like, really, really strong. I think maybe having a second one on the board is be neat for more versus, like, mid range and control stuff. We're getting the extra, just having a source of 
just more rats every turn is is quite nice um the butcher has been fantastic both as something you could play on like go wide with uh, as well as that kind of like menace ability just like swing with the team here um so happy with these cards happy with these cards like, the one thing to kind of like think about because the deck is like fairly strong the thing it's just doing is pretty powerful and it's quite good at it the points of weakness we found were like with like hey sometimes our mana is not consistent um or we're like just, just not just, we did get a little unfortunate with like the way our, our lands played out sometimes but in terms of like if you draw the second elbush mystic if they've not got like it's probably it not great similarly with like if you are stuck on three lands so like maybe you want to play more actual mana sources mana sources um instead of like elves maybe cut down to four and just play a couple more normal ones or like even the force Agonim's awakening even if we didn't use it here um the other thing is that having more lands in that means you're more likely to be able to cast it for large amount value and being able to cast it for six is kind of like the sweet spot right which is a, a little tight which kind of brings us to the second point which is like hey what about this like mono black version if you're playing nykthos maybe you can't play as many meter vaults obviously you don't have these one drops you have to play some of the other ones if we just do a quick uh search here for rats during part 11 i kind of explained before i don't like because like making your opponent discard it's not always good uh the gnawing vermin has some utility like hey sometimes you'll be able to snipe things off with it um also if you're more in on that plan where you're trying to put cards in the graveyard for Agonim's awakening then you can maybe get some advantage out of gnawing vermin gnawing vermin there milling yourself which is kind of interesting definitely a possibility um the other things here are like typhoid rats which is obviously like fine but not great um and then you can go more in on like bigger stuff maybe you play some ant some some icons of ancestry it means that when you're casting caramonics you can like immediately have the mana to maybe deploy some stuff off of it but the kind of problems we saw today like hey there are matches where you struggle to keep creatures in play those are also going to be true with like the normal devotion thing um and so for the time being i do think that the collective company version of the deck is better i'll give it a try with like maybe a couple less mana creatures um see how it plays that way and I do actually kind of want to play a basic swamp instead of one of these dartboard pathways, just so we've got something to find off a field over here. Um, burnt a little there today. But overall, I think the deck is good. The shell is pretty strong. You're doing enough, like, you're putting enough power into play quickly enough to pressure down combo decks, but you can get a little overwhelmed in the mid game. But after the board, I think I probably want to play a fourth Crippling Fear just because there are matches where it's just like, this is lights out amazing, but also you need it so you're not just, like, getting uh attacks like under um and then yeah maybe more icons that's all that's like the other adjustment i'm making the board um I think, again i think you're fast enough for the combo decks it's just kind of being some of the more um aggressive uh, aggro stuff like like characters particularly bad because they have so much spot removal um for like your rats again colonies me one toughness i'm really liking the idea of just playing more a bunch of icons to kind of help protect them a little bit um but yeah I think as a concept really good pretty strong deck of the format and one that should not be slept on so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please do like subscribe share it around like good stuff uh if you have any comments on how you build the deck differently any especially like if you're interested in like the mono black version anything in particular you're like hmm maybe you could try this then do let me know because i will be revisiting this deck in the future i think um trying some new stuff we'll see we'll see i also i do definitely like the idea of going in on like gnawing vermin Agonim's Awakening or some other kind of like a uh, resurrection package, maybe like Call of the Dark Dweller. Um, but being able to bring like, once you have enough one mana rot rats, you can play Call of the Dark Dweller. You know what? Fine, I hit caps. Call of the Dark Dweller brings back two creature cards with total mana value three or less. You need to be bringing back a one drop and a two drop basically. Or like, hey, resurrecting Caramonics is sick. Yeah, that's going to be good. So that's another angle to go as well, actually. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, some awesome stuff to try, and I uh, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Peace out.